means it is a privilege for me to address the next generation of orthopedic surgeons and today we are talking about bone. There is a commonest thing we are going to deal with and of the bones, the commonest thing which we are going to come across is a broken bone, a diseased bone, a bone which has a cyst. How does it repair? and how can we help the bone to heal. Like other land animals in the world, on the globe, fracture in human being has been uniting with bone formation. Most of the tissues and organs in the body would heal with some degree of scar tissue. However, we have an inbuilt mechanism of bone healing with bone. The favorable biological environments, however, must be provided by the caregiver and orthopedic surgeons. In, in a way, you have the responsibility or we have the responsibility to help the bone to heal after the bone has broken. One of the most important thing to understand is this is the appearance of bone. In reality, bone is a vascular tree. It is only covered with mineral and some soft tissues, we call them say, soft tissues covering the blood vessels and then over it the bone. If we can remove the mineralized material, there will be nothing else except a blood vessel lying down. Sir. So, if this is the structure of the bone, if this is the structure of the bone without mineral, then one should know. If it breaks, it will bleed like anything. One should know it that if a major bone breaks, even if it is a closed fracture, there will be a loss of roughly 2.5 liters. And that is some of the advice is if more than one major bone is broken, do try to replace it with a blood replacement. If, if the fracture, unless the concerned bone undergoes repair and regeneration prior to implant failure, one should know that the, once the bone unites, it serves you for the whole life. Metal is, it looks strong, but metal does not have the potential of spontaneous regeneration. Bone is a living structure, if it breaks, it will regenerate as well. It has the power to repair. What happens when a bone fractures? There is a disruption of the blood vessels leading to hematoma. Don't forget the appearance of the bone without the mineral on it. The bone will, the moment the bone breaks, there is a disruption of blood supply to the bone. There is a collection of blood around the bone and this collection of blood around the bone is called fractured hematoma, which in due course of time gets invaded by neoangiogenesis and after some time, some degree of mineral deposition takes place in this fractured hematoma. Then it is called, different names given to it, a soft callus, a mineralized callus, a remodeling callus. Here is an example. If a bone breaks, any displaced fracture would cause disruption of medullary as well as periosteal blood vessels. Fortunately, the periosteal blood supply increases within a few hours. Immediately, there is a reaction. See, that is how we call it the trigger of repair. Here is an example, a bone breaking. What does it do? As soon as the bone breaks, there is a collection of blood around it, but within a few days to a few weeks, this very blood collected around so-called fracture hematoma undergoes invasion by neoangiogenesis, neoosteogenesis, and even formation of medullary canal in due course of time. Broadly speaking, we describe this cascade of repair of bones and grafts in this fashion. There is a stage of inflammation 
lasting for a few days, stage of repair lasting for a few weeks, stage of remodeling lasting for months. In fact, one should know our bones are in a process of dynamic equilibrium. Every day there is a bone turnover. Some of the old bone is discarded and a new one is added. Basically, the remodeling of the bone is taking place during the whole of the lifetime of human beings. Certainly, much more in children and much more when the bone gets broken or bone is grafted, this process gets accentuated. Here is another example, the same thing again we are seeing. Bone broken, collection of blood, the blood in due course of time gets converted into cartilage. This is the cartilage and this cartilage after some time may get converted into bone and what is called endo, endochondral endochondral ossification. Basically, the repair takes place based upon two things. A host must provide a good healthy area. Hematoma is a host job. Inflammation is a host job. Neovascularization is a job of the host, perivascular mesenchymal cells. Around these neovascularization, there are plenty of rich mesenchymal cells. And it is this rich mesenchymal cells which ultimately change the callus and start making bone in it. When we are dealing with a graft, what has the graft to do? Graft is basically a framework, a favorable framework where the invading mesenchymal cells are able to get converted into bone forming cells. Just see an example in a child. The growing child, he gets a fracture, he gets a callus, this is called callus, fracture hematoma, getting invaded by minerals, and this is what is called callus. This is an earlier callus. There is a soft bone formed. It becomes more strong with the passage of time. The callus becomes more dense. And look at the beauty, how beautifully this angled uniting fracture has got remodeled. If you wait for a year or two, the remodeling will be so good that you will not be able to see the deformity. So the remodeling is a long process. It keeps on going. And the basic formula behind remodeling is so-called Wolf's Law, meaning thereby function determines form. If, we, if the fracture is united, we subject the patient to function, gradually this remodeling will take place and it will bring back the same beautiful shape of the bone with the passage of time. And as, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, any fracture in the bone will cause blood collection around the side of the fracture. What breaks? What breaks is the endosteal bones, periosteal bones, even the soft tissue endosteal vessels, periosteal vessels and the soft tissues present around the side of the fracture bleed and then they collect around the side of the fracture in a patient who has got a closed fracture. Now let us know it. If there is no wound outside, it is called a closed fracture. If there is a wound, best communicating with the side of the fracture is called an open fracture. In an open fracture, the fracture hematoma created around the fracture side would drain out, whereas in a closed fracture, the fracture hematoma at the side of the fracture will stay around the side of the fracture. 